I want you to turn to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 9. One of the things that's so important to realize and understand about the person of Christ and his work is the necessity of his priestly work. The necessity of his priestly work. Simple question. Are you a good person or inherently a bad person? You're inherently a bad person. Romans chapter three, there is none good, no, not one. There is no one who seeks after God. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. By nature, by birth, we are not righteous people, but we are unrighteous people. Now God... Is he like us? No, he is not. He is righteous. He is just. The angels declare three times, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. So remember the illustration is how do you get into the tent? How do you get into the tent? Can you simply enter the tent of a holy God? Can you simply go to heaven and enter the Lord's temple and say, I'm here. Me and all my beauty and wonder, I'm here. No. Because before the Lord, who can stand? No one. No one. And so the writer of Hebrews says this. This is so important for Christianity. So important for your spiritual life. To enter the presence of God, you must have your sin atoned for. You must have your sin atoned for. And the only way you can have your sin atoned for is by looking to the great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 12. He entered once for all into the holy places. He's going into the heavenly temple, not by means of the blood and goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. We sang about this, didn't we? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood can save. He is all my righteousness. Jesus on the cross was making a propitiation, a sacrifice for you that would cover all your sins. Verse 13, for if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, listen, purify your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. You must be purified by the Lord Jesus Christ before you can approach God. And the only way to be purified from your sin is to stop trusting in what the writer of Hebrews says are dead works. You have to repent of your dead works and trust in the blood of Christ alone. The reformers called it sola fide. Faith alone, apart from the works of the law. And this, my friends, is what Roman Catholic theology gets dead wrong. Roman Catholic theology says At the Council of Trent, faith and works justify. Yes, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe in his sacrifice, but we're also trusting in the works. No, no, no. If you're trusting a little bit in the works, you're not completely trusting in the blood. You're not completely putting your faith in his life, in his righteousness, in his sacrifice. And there's been many famous Roman Catholics known for their compassion. Think of Mother Teresa, Pope John Paul, and and these people. But unless they repented of the theology they held, listen, friend, they were standing outside the tent. They never entered into real communion with God. That's how serious this is. That's what Jesus is saying is to know me, you must trust in Christ alone and repent. This is humbling, isn't it? 
Nobody wants to hear this. You mean I'm not good enough to make it in? No, you're not. Nothing that you have ever done can qualify you for a relationship with God because of your sin. So you you must repent of your dead works and trust in the blood and righteousness of Christ alone. And until you do that, until you enter through the narrow gate of the gospel, you will never go into the tent. You can do religious things. You can dress the part. You can come to church. You can be an upstanding citizen, but you will not have communion with God. So I plead with you, friend, if you have not trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ alone, apart from works, as your Savior, do that today. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, and you will enter into this experience of eternal life. And by the way, once you have it, you can never lose it, right? Because then it would not be eternal life.